usted, usted entregarlo. Déjalo, 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 Yo le pido perdón por mi hijo, por favor. Por nuestros hijos que están pasando lo que están pasando, por favor. Yo le pido perdón por mi hijo, por favor. The woman you saw was Olga Kinga, a mother who asked the president of Ecuador for forgiveness in the hope that she would move him enough to release her son, teenage, to her teenage son, captured after a student protest against a possible increase in pub public transportation fare. He and other as 120 students were accused of damage to a third party's property. To free them, the rising autocrat asked them to accept their guilt. Last October 4, 39 students declared themselves guilty even though just the day before they had affirmed that they were not responsible for the crimes of which they were accused. The kids were released on probation. Today's social protest, protest has been criminalized in Ecuador and people are now afraid to take to the streets even though it is a right that is guaranteed in the Constitution. Rafael Correa, is one of those people who arrive at the right place at the right time. His government began with the highest price of oil in history. The bonanza allowed him to implement great public work projects. But what did we lose in exchange of those beautiful highways? We lost the right to express ourselves freely. Today, we are people who observe but keep to ourselves because we are afraid. Few of us still speak out, but, but we have paid a high price for our audacity. I was one of the journalists President Correa insulted every Saturday in his special four-hour TV show called The Sabatina, until I lost my job because I investigated a corruption case involving a, a cousin of President Correa. He applies the old strategy of disparaging the enemy. This is a collection of insults that's, that the most powerful man in my country used against journalists over the last seven years. Yo no sé cuándo he dicho una palabra soez, procas. Ya no sean tan puerco. Y a esta porquería le damos la del zorro. Prensa como buitre. Que esto me causa repulsión. Cavernaria. Hipócritas. Prensa corrupta. Groseres. Cobardes. Pasquín. Jauría. Prensa perversa. Mentirosos. Cínicos. Y antipatria. Estos pasquines. Prensa conspirativa. Son una porquería. Realmente le dan asco. ¿eh? Perros hambrientos. Cuánta basura. Sin vergüenzas. Por eso. Cojan esta prensa corrupta. No sean engañados por estos sinvergüenzas. In seven years of government, 28 communications media have been shut down. In 2013, a new communications law was approved. It has been described as the most restrictive communications law of the American continent by prestigious organizations dedicated to human rights and freedom of speech. Because of this law, corruption is no longer investigated in Ecuador, and censorship and self-censorship reign in the Ecuadorian media. President Correa is one of those persons who likes to change his mind very often. When Correa reached power, he promised to protect the Yasuní, one of the most sensitive areas of the Ecuadorian jungle and one of the most biodiverse regions in the world, as well one of its rich, richest in oil. This is also the home to the world's last peoples under voluntary isolation. They spent millions on an advertising campaign to support the idea of leaving that oil under the ground. They got the country's best artists together to sing for life.
sing this song million of times to save the jungle. But two years later, the government changed, it op changed its opinion and mounted a new campaign to convince us that it's, that it's better to exploit the oil under the Yasuni so that we can use that money to build more schools, hospitals, and highways. Then he ordered the oil machinery into the reserve. This fact infuriated many, but especially the youngest citizens, who tried to call a popular referendum to ask the people if they wanted the Yasuni to be exploited or if they wanted to leave the oil under, uh, underground. The National Electoral Council, managed by a friend of Korea, dubiously threw out 34% of the 700,000 signatures they collected, making the referendum impossible. This is not all. Korea also takes care personally of common citizens who dare to challenge him. September 2013, Jaime Guevara, a well-known popular singer, takes advantage of the passing of the presidential vehicle through one of the streets of Quito to prefer an obscene gest gesture. He did this. The president becomes indignant gets out of the car and invites him to resolve the issue like men. Guevara falls to the floor and is unable to respond to the presidential challenge. Two days later, President Correa appears on national radio and TV broadcast and refers this way to Jaime Guevara. Jaime Guevara, como es un macho, ¿no? Una mala señal presidente, me le bajo, bueno, tiene algún problema conmigo. Créame que ese pobre hombre se tambaleaba, apestaba alcohol y tenía toda una droguería encima. ¿Por qué droga? ¿Ya? Me dio esta pena, llévense a este tipo, llévense. O sea, en esas condiciones no puede ambular a las 9 de la mañana. Ese pobre hombre borrachísimo, totalmente drogado. Pobre hombre, ¿no? lo que tiene que irse es un sanatorio para que lo desintoxique y no hable tantas incoherencias. Jaime Guevara does not consume drugs or alcohol because he suffers from epilepsy. Correa recognizes publicly that in this case he was wrong, but added something else. Somos gente que rectificamos cuando hay algún error. Rectificación. Debemos aclarar que el señor Jaime Guevara es mal criado, reconoce que hizo una yuca al presidente y mentiroso. Hemos demostrado todas sus mentiras. Si este tipo me hubiera hecho una yuca, una seña obscena delante de mi madre y mi esposa, le hubiera dado tal patada en salva sea la parte que se hubiera tenido que sentar de oreja el resto del año. Y, y si lo hace, responderé, señores. Y si quieren, pongo mi cargo a, con, a consideración de mi pueblo, pero no me pidan que me deshumanice y tenga que aguantar esta caterva. In all of these years, I have witnessed this and much more, but nothing infuriated me more than the crusade that the Ecuadorian government mounted to defend Julian Assange and Edward Snowden, and along with them, supposedly, the right that we all have to access the information that governments hide. You must know that while on the one hand the government of Rafael Correa conferred diplomatic asylum on Julian Assange, Article 30 of the Communication Law prohibits the diffusion of classified or restricted information, as well as the information that comes from personal communications, such as emails, for example. In other words, if Julian Assange or Edward Snowden would have done what they did in Ecuador, they would not be champions of freedom of expression, but rather two more members of what Rafael, Rafael Correa calls 
the corrupt press. Rafael Correa stated on numerous occasions that anyone who wants to give an opinion on how to govern the country would first have to win elections. This year, however, he learned to respect his constituents. On February 23rd, he lost the local elections and the opposition retook control of the most important capitals in the country. Now, Rafael Correa has decided that he no longer likes elections. Rafael Correa affirms that he's a democratic president, but as in his party there is no one to succeed him, the rising autocrat thinks that he has no other choice than to become a candidate again. And for this, he has ordered the assembly to work on a project to amend the constitution and open a path to indefinite re-election. Even though 33% of people do not agree with that idea and wanted to be consulted in a referendum. Today, I call you to be aware of what is happening in South America. Find the coincidence with other regions where people are also harassed for defending their rights. Please talk about this, this story and that, that way you will be helping me defeat a democracy of silence and a rising autocrat. Thank you.